67,000 kilometers. That's how much Spaniard Javier Martinez has clocked up so far in what he calls an adventure of a lifetime, cycling around the world, often staying in remote villages and destinations off the beaten track. Javier has been pedaling around the world for the past five and a half years. His latest leg has taken him all the way through Africa. We've come here to Longaban, about 110 kilometers outside Cape Town, to have a conversation with him. Javier, hey, John. good to see you. You well? Good to see you. You must be exhausted. Oh, a little bit, yeah. The windy, sandy, sunny, lot of traffic. Yeah. But you have a beautiful country. Eh? It is beautiful, isn't and it? Nice people, yeah. Javier, the middle of three children, grew up in Spain and from a young age always had an adventurous spirit. I always have fascination for nature, but traveling it became, since I was very, very young, let's say like five, six years, I always has fascination for maps. That interest led him to the UK in his early 20s, where he trained as a photographer. He then traveled the world as a photojournalist covering conflict areas. Javier's life took an unexpected turn when, in 2009, he was filming an outbreak of unrest in the Middle East. He was documenting a demonstration in the Palestinian territories. And uh, one of the guys was carrying a kite with a rainbow color. He was shot five meters away from me by the Israeli soldiers on the other side. A Palestinian civilian died in front of him. That was one of the moments that showed me I'm not ready to do war photography. It's very really sad. I can't hardly that story. I can, if I do more, I lose the humanity I want to keep. So I decided that I wanted to cycle, to travel the world, and to show more than bad stories, the happy stories. Yeah, like a poem Javier that, would carry the bare minimum like for his epic journey. All the way from Indonesia. Javier, this is like an apartment on two wheels. Take us through what you, what you have here. This is more than an apartment. It's like a house and a life all together. This is the bedroom where I have the, the sleeping things. This is the closet, shoes and clothes. Okay. This is the office where I have my camera. This one is the bathroom where I have the washing and the towel and the medical kit. And this one is the kitchen where I have the, the stove, the pots and a chopping uh, board for vegetables and knife. This is the most useful thing. This is the water. I carry like two, which is four and a half liters, honey, petrol for cooking and a good Spanish uh, olive oil. Has to be Spanish, right? Yeah, of course. His adventure started in September 2010 in Indonesia, the Asian leg of his round-the-world trip. His bike was sponsored, but he funded himself from his photojournalism, spending just a few dollars a day on food. Indonesia is, uh, is not just the most beautiful country in the world, which might be the most beautiful. It was my first country cycling, so I was new, everything was fresh. Everything was, I was amazed by everything. Javier spent much of his time taking spectacular shots of Indonesia and the Asian countries that he traveled through. He would tend to stay in the more remote areas to live and breathe each country's unique culture. A highlight for Javier was the winter he spent cycling and hiking in the Himalayas. It was amazing, you know, and as well I chose to do some parts of the Himalayas in the winter time when I was camping at minus 42 degrees. But I think always the harder the way is the nicest the destiny, is where you get more challenge. He spent two and a half months traveling through Iran before he faced a real test of character when he was caught in a snow blizzard for four days in Armenia. I went through his pass. I was stuck in a snowstorm, so I couldn't go back. And ahead of me, I had like a 20 kilometers of like deep, deep snow, which I have no water, no food. Fortunately, he stumbled upon a deserted army truck and found a jar of jam in the cab, but the snow kept falling. And I thought to myself, if he keeps snowing this tonight, I will be dead. I cannot go back, I cannot go forwards. Lucky it was very windy. He removed the very thin snow and I was able to push the bike next day, four kilometers in 12 hours. That's extraordinary. It's very interesting how the, my mind went into the, um, it turned into instinct, mm. mechanic. Mm. I wasn't thinking, it was just, the mind was telling you, go, go, go. Mm. He arrived in Europe in the summer of 2013 and headed for his hometown in Spain. There he saw his proud dad for the first time in three years. All his friends were there to welcome him. After Asia, Europe is, uh, let's say, is boring. You know, I grew up in, in Europe. In Europe is the country of, the continent of money. There is no, we lost most of the human values there. Everyone stays in the houses. There is no life on the street. Everything is closed at five o'clock. 
His African odyssey began in December 2013 when he crossed into Morocco. Asia is the continent of diversity. Africa is the country of the continent of warm. The people are very warm people. He would spend two years traveling the continent, witnessing firsthand the amazing contrasts Africa offers. But he had to be on his toes. Ebola was at its peak in West Africa. West Africa is very wild. It's very wild. I was there when the Ebola, so I was stuck in borders. The corruption is part of the daily life. The cities are quite dangerous. The traffic is horrible, but the people are amazing. And what makes the traveling is the people, it's not the other things. But he had to keep up his guard for unexpected perils. In Nigeria, Javier's Mediterranean appearance became somewhat of a curse. He was often mistaken for a member of the militant group Boko Haram. So I got attacked 10 times or more thinking I was a jihadist. I was a suicide bomber. One day I was going to the church to look for shelter. And as soon as I was going inside the, the area of the church, all people started running away, <laughs> screaming. So the police came and arrested me. They find out that I saw the passport, I explained what I'm doing. And I, they find out I'm a normal guy. But they still, you need to go through this in every village, in every town. The highlight of Javier's epic journey in Africa was his time spent in the Congo Basin rainforests, where he experienced raw nature, wildlife, and untouched landscapes. But on a journey like this, there's only so much one can plan for. The rest is left to chance. For example, not being able to cross a border because an immigration official has gone on holiday with the visa stamp. And that's what happened when he tried to leave the Congo Republic for the DRC. He was stuck for a week. Despite Africa's challenges, Javier spoke of the incredible warmth and hospitality he experienced on the continent. He stayed safe by camping, mostly in rural areas and villages, where he soaked up the rich culture, and always to the delight of children who were drawn to him like a magnet. Javier shared all his experiences with friends, family, and followers on his social media. Even with the technology, Javier, I'd imagine that being on a bicycle by yourself for very long periods of time must be quite lonely. You get to spend a lot of time with yourself. I feel lonely in the people, in the areas where are people. If they, I'm in an area where there's no one, I don't feel lonely. For example, crossing the Sahara Desert, the Congo Forest, the Namibian Desert, I'm, I'm camping there, I feel the happiest person ever. When Javier crossed into Namibia in December, he had ridden through 33 African countries, survived two bouts of typhoid and malaria in Ghana and Zambia. Cape Town was now within his grasp. In Langaban, he set up his tent at the farmhouse hotel, one night to go before the final push to the mother city. After a good meal, we insisted, despite his protestations, that he accept our offer of a room. Whoa, whoa. Last night before Cape Town, I'm gonna sleep like a proper king, eh? Saving energy for tomorrow. 6.30 and Javier was off. With 110 kilometers to go, he had to contend with the sweltering heat and a strong headwind. He made it in just seven hours, a special moment when he entered the V&A waterfront. Yeah. Well Sorry, I'm a bit, a bit sweaty, Joe. That's eh? all right, no problem, so am I. And then for the most famous photograph of all, Table Mountain as a backdrop. Crying, eh? oh. He's been in the saddle for five and a half years now, and a cold South African beer couldn't have tasted better. Javier plans to publish a book when he's completed his journey to showcase the planet's most inspiring and visual stories. All right, time for a situation report. We have five damaged spokes on the rear wheel, plenty of scratches and dents on the frame, and a very bald front tire. Much like a car, this bicycle is gonna need a major service before Javier embarks on the next leg of this extraordinary journey. And that will be South and North America, with the final leg being Australia and New Zealand, nine to 10 years in all. Tourists and South Africans are fascinated to hear of Javier's adventures, and he's making plenty of new friends in Cape Town. He managed to cycle half the world without being robbed, but perhaps true to form, he was mugged in Cape Town on his second day here. But it hasn't phased him. He's loving the city, and it's time now for him to rest. After resting in Cape Town for some time, eating well, meeting people, next one is down, down there, the other side of the ocean, South America, all the way from South America to Alaska. Another three years cycling more. 
I hope. <laughs>